Nightline is brought to you by the Dever Team, your source for New Smyrna Beach real estate and everything else New Smyrna Beach. Go to www.thedeverteam.com and call UCF alumni Travis Dever for all your New Smyrna Beach needs. 386-690-1636. That's 386-690-1636. Welcome to UCF Nightline, your source for UCF sports and former player information. Hello, Night Nation. This is Andrew Fegley coming to you from the 1148 Studios. This is Nightline 192 from the award-winning Nightline Sports Network. Joining me as always... Trace Trolko. Hello, everyone. Talking up nights in the NBA with our insider Ben Stout from you can to you can't make it in the American. We're discussing the Huskies' rumored plan to bolt the AAC and which is really the more successful program in the American, UConn or the Cows? That's an Ask Nightline. But first. Oh, pick me! Me, 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 me! Pick me! Pick me! Me, me! Pick me! Me, me! (laughs) All right, well, that was a horrible editing job I did there, by the way. But whatever. It is what it is. Uh, Some fans, some UCF fans tuned into Thursday's two-round NBA draft for some six hours watching and waiting for UCF players to be picked only to see none selected. No worries, though. Four nights, quickly inked contracts, first to sign Aubrey Dawkins with the New Orleans Pelicans, and then uh, Taco Falls signs with the Boston Celtics, and then uh, joining the hometown Orlando Magic for the Summer League, B.J. Taylor and Chad Brown. NBA's Summer League tips off July 5th in Las Vegas. And ahead, we're talking with our Hoops Insider Ben Stout about all of this. Another one inked a contract. It was announced Sunday. Remember A.J. Davis? I do. Yeah, A.J. Awesome. Davis, who he was in Kosovo uh, last season. And Sunday, news broke that he had inked a summer league deal with uh, the Philadelphia 76ers. You mentioned when these games, and we talked to Ben about it as well. You can watch these games. They're on yeah. ESPN, NBA TV. Boston's first game is actually against the 76ers. So there's oh, that perfect. potential uh, Taco Fall, A.J. Davis sightings in that game. It, uh, it'll be on ESPN. And, uh, you know, and then there are other Pelicans are going to get a lot of coverage with what's that guy's name again? That's Zion, Zion Williams. Zion, yeah. uh, he was dressed uh, pretty much all in white. Uh, I thought he looked uh, pretty sharp. Yeah. In his, uh, mm-hmm. I mean, all these guys look sharp, but as some of these guys can pull off purples and pinks. I don't think I can. I, I think I watched it through about the first six picks, and then I was I was done. It, it, yeah, yeah. I, I was asleep. In fact, I messaged Ben during the thing, and I'm like, "How long does this last?" It like, was almost six hours. Yeah, that's crazy. I watched the first couple of picks. Like I'll watch the NBA dra- or not the NBA, the, the NFL draft. Yeah. Because I like it. At least the first round or the first yeah. two days. Right. The third well, if, day if I'm waiting bit. for somebody to be picked, yeah. obviously, here with, with the UCF players yeah. and stuff, I'll watch sometimes the entire thing. I think when when uh, Shaquem got drafted that time, I watched up until that point. And, you know, that was the second day or, or third day into it. So, um I've watched that, but this NBA thing, I'm not concerned with it, really. It's not my sport, so... Yeah, the pacing on the television portion of it is it and just I, went on forever. I knew nothing about any of them except Zion. He was the only one that I even knew who he was. Um, so, you know, waiting for, for UCF Knights to be picked, I wasn't going to wait all that time. So I had said on Twitter at UCF underscore Nightline that this was actually an NBA draft I was looking forward to. And then I tuned into the first couple of picks. And then I knew none of the UCF guys were going to go in round one. And I went and did other things. And I tuned back in for round And then I fell asleep. Yeah, I fell asleep during it. And then I woke up. It's like 1230. And they're on pick 54. And yeah. I quickly am back on Twitter. Nobody selected yet. I'm like, okay. Yeah. I turned on some lights. I try and wire myself up to get through these next six picks. No nights. And then I'm like, well, then I was awake. Yeah. And then it was released that uh, that Aubrey had signed with the Pelicans. So and I'm like, okay. 
more guys may sign, yeah. but I got to go to bed yeah. at some point here. So it gets a little ridiculous, yeah. But we do a pretty good uh, breakdown with Ben coming up. So yeah, I had a lot of questions actually uh, when you know reading all this stuff about these guys being uh, you know picked. So my qu- a couple of my questions are in there talking with Ben, and Ben explains it pretty well. Do you so. understand an Exhibit Ten clause now better? Well, I mean, I you know looked it up, but. You know, yeah. no, I'd never I heard don't. of that. Yeah, the, the two way contracts and the G League and the Summer League and the the. There'll be a quiz later. Yeah, there's just so much going on there with the NBA. They they have so much going on. Well, uh, let's talk about a little bit of football. There's there's got to be something we can talk about, right? Sixty seven days as we record. That's crazy. Still like, seems like a long way off. <laughs> well, yes and no, because I have preparations to make for this whole Oh, you're deeply live involved thing. in it now, yeah. Yeah, so I, I'm procrastinating at this point, and I better get on it. Uh, I need to have all my stuff, my ducks in a row. Your, uh, uh, your transmitters and your wires and your yeah, microphones yeah. in a row. I got to get all that stuff, the kinks worked out and ready to go. Because uh, if you hadn't heard the last time we talked about this, we're doing it for every game this year, home and away. We will be doing it from the the uh, softball lot, uh, and we're going to make it kind of a, a nightline post-game party. And there might be refreshments and things like that. Water? Well, possibly some more. Well, yeah, there'll be some water there, too, of course. <laughs> but we want you guys to join us in the softball lot, and you will know very well where the spot is by the time that we get that going. Um, and we will have a, some way to identify the spot as well. So uh, it's going to be a heck of a deal, uh, and I can't wait. And we have yet to finalize where that is going to be aired and we're still working on that and that's one of the things with i see 67 days and i'm i'm getting a little i'm getting a little warm and nervous about uh that whole situation so anyway it'll we'll figure it out by the time it starts so well you know who also is getting ready are the players yeah um i enjoyed watching the the photos on social media this week of the knights doing yoga yeah uh, limbering up well, what's I mean, your yoga experience? A very, very short yoga You've done experience. It though. Yeah, yeah. My sister is way into it. She's in France and she is like a yoga master. She has she went to school for this oh. yoga they make you go to school in France. It's a big deal. And she has the yoga master title. I th- I think that's what it's called. I don't know. You ever done hot yoga? I have no idea what it is. Essentially doing yoga in like a ninety plus degree room. Hmm. I tried this one time. And the instructor came over and told me to stop. She said, you are overheating. (laughs) And she poured water on my head. Awesome. And I thought, the whole thing I thought was not yoga, but this I thought was miserable. Hmm. I mean, I I guess it's supposed to make your muscles more relaxed. Well, it takes a lot of core strength, I can tell you that, which I don't really have. You know who has core strength? Well, Otis Anderson Otis has, Anderson has a lot of strength, it looks like. Holy Moses. The, I mean, not that he was no, not in shape before. But the pictures of this guy that came out this week, holy crap. Like, <laughs> he, I mean, that's. I, I, I want to say something a little different than that, but my God. Yeah, he's definitely, look it up. It's on Twitter someplace or whatever. UCF I'm football sure. on UCF Twitter. Football, yeah. You know what I thought of when I saw that picture is that uh, Coach Heupel has spoken in spring camp about what the guys do over summer to prepare for fall camp is where you get separation between playbook well, or practicing with your position group, you know, of quarterback just lobbing some balls to wide receivers in their own free time. You can tell the guys that are hitting the weight room and the nutrition program as well. Right. Well, if it has anything to do with that, Otis Anderson will be tremendous this year. If, if, if you can go by a picture and see – the the ripped <laughs> muscles and everything. I mean, dude looks totally completely different than he did before. Um, so he went through some kind of a transformation for sure. So. Might be a question to ask him during fall camp if he knows his body fat percentage. Because yeah, it's, it's pretty tumbled. low. Yeah. When I worked in Gainesville, I had opportunity to interview Emmett Smith, former Gator great NFL player, and we were talking, and I asked him, like, well, "What's your body fat percentage?" What do you, his answer? 
three percent. Three percent. Three percent. I was four point five in college. Four point five on each arm. What? No, four point five. You're making that. No, up. I was two hundred and ten pounds in four point five. Four point five. Yep. I'm blown away by this. See, you're blowing the getting to know you part. Oh, that would have well, been a good getting. Yeah. You're always giving away the getting to know yeah, you part. Yeah, I know, and I have nothing for that later. Well, there it too, is, so. right there. Um, yeah. What I thought on Emmett Smith is that his skin looked like tissue paper on muscle. I mean, the guy had no fat. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know what Otis Anderson's it's body hard, fat percentage, but it's tumbled. Uh, during probably my senior year of high school all the way through college, I ate nothing but, like, pasta and chicken, grilled chicken. I ate really nothing besides that and worked out, like, you know. Four and a half. Four and a half. 4.5 mm. it was really hard i'm probably like 25 now <laughs> but under underneath there there's still some remnants though <laughs> there are some remnants. underneath the layers <laughs> i still under the under my fat i still have a six pack i can see it every <laughs> once in a while uh, uh, and we're not talking about the one you bought at the store no, no. Yeah, well, no. that's the the problem uh yeah carbs are really the the issue with all that <laughs> but yeah it uh it was hard to do i mean that that's hard stuff to do we had a nutrition program at Kansas, uh, definitely had a, they, we didn't need anything that they didn't hand us. Basically, that was the thing. I mean, you you got to cheat a little bit on the weekends and stuff when you were out with the family or whatever, but you, you didn't cheat much because you would feel it the, in practice or whatever. You would feel in the weight room, especially. And then the other thing, though, that was back when. Um, I, w- I won't say PEDs, but I will say there were some supplements and things that you could take then that you can't take now. So the guys nowadays have a lot harder uh, way of going through it because there was about half the stuff on the list that there is now. I took that Androstein stuff that all the baseball players got in trouble taking, Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa, all those guys. That was the big thing. And you could use pretty much as much of the ephedrine back in the day ephedrine or whatever it was called uh kind of it was kind of like a speed thing i had this energy drink that i would drink while i was working out like a a workout drink and man that stuff would just you would lose weight just drinking that i mean you'd lose fat because it was just it was crazy i'm sure my heart will have issues in my latter years from that but you see the evolution though of nutrition Were, were we doing nightline Remember that guy, Jose Jose? Was that his name? Remember, so, yeah. he got suspended by O'Leary because he uh, snuck a pizza in yeah, on their I Friday night in the hotel on a home game? I don't think that we... I think that was maybe a couple years You're talking about guys cheating. Started. Yeah. Yeah, guy sneaks in a pizza after curfew or whatever. Yeah, well, team hotel. That was, um, O'Leary got wind of it and suspended and him. And O'Leary's guys weren't really... I mean... I don't but, but remember want... guys being really, really crazy in shape, though. I well, mean, but that was some. a big changeover, certainly, from O'Leary to right. Frost. Oh, yeah. uh, big a big time. emphasis, and it seems like Heupel and his team have continued that. And I think Center. Heupel and, and his team have taken it a little bit farther, actually, because the, that was one of the things that he talked about a couple of times, Heupel, uh, about how he even changed what Frost was doing. Um, it, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I can't remember what they made he said, changes. But yeah, they definitely made changes, and I think that you can tell. So, well, they're continuing as well um, with their having cookouts and pool parties, and then yeah. this week they went to Sea World. Uh, I had to laugh. Uh, one of our followers, we follow him back, uh, defensive lineman Cam Good on Twitter. Uh, posting, Coach Hype made me sit in the second row on the Manta at SeaWorld. Never again traumatized, <laughs> he writes on Twitter. Not a roller coaster guy, I guess. Well, I like uh, that, though. But I like how he throws Coach Hype in there. And yeah. That's, that's uh, again, good team bonding stuff, having Did, fun, and, and emphasizes what they like to say, that you're in the entertainment capital of the world here, and that's one of their recruiting tools. So uh, they're going to take some guys to SeaWorld Heck every yeah. once in a while. You that's know? great that they do that. Did you hear uh, this week there was a thing with Heupel? Um, I guess they were doing one of their camps or whatever, and one of the players in the camp got hurt, broke his ankle, and Heupel actually went to the hospital and like stayed there and talked to him and all that stuff. I think that is absolutely awesome. That is the kind of guy that we want leading our program. That kind of guy right there that does stuff like that. And I think kids, that, that is incredible. And kid, that dude will remember. Yeah, and his high school coach put out on Twitter yeah. 
how much he appreciated Coach Heupel visiting and spending time with him. And, and, the and I think he said too. on his post, class act or yeah. first rate, something along those lines. And the kid did too. Um, but I, I just, that kid will remember, that coach will remember when, you know, his kids, you know, I'm sure he'll be the first place. He'll tell his kids that they should go UCF. And that player, hopefully he's a good enough player that he will be here one of these days playing under Heupel because that was freaking awesome. Absolutely awesome. I love it. Yeah, it's a good moment. Uh, so yoga, theme parks, uh, you know, just a typical uh, week in the off season. A couple commits signing, though, yeah. too, this week. Or not signing, but but giving their uh, commitment uh, this week. Mark Pitts, an offensive lineman from Gainesville. Love to see that. You're taking him out of Gainesville. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because you know that his family was probably... Uh, you know, the, that team yeah. up there. Yeah. And then uh, another one, uh, Brandon Coleman from Miami, a defensive back, six foot 170. The lineman, 6'6", 295. Mm -hmm. Big dudes. Um, so I've watched both of their tape already. Mark Pitts, I'm very excited about him because he's he's just, he's a bruiser. He uh, When we look at offensive linemen, of course, I've always commented on the guys that take their player out of the of of the the game completely, um, and this guy holds on to his guy kind of like Hudanic did. Uh, I remember talking about Hudanic um, on his high school tape, where he just completely took the guy out and would even lay on top of him sometimes and completely take him out of every play. This guy on his highlight tape, and of course they're highlights, they're showing the good stuff. They're not showing the bad stuff, but he was glaringly different and better than all the rest of the players that were on those fields through all those games. Um, he just dominated his guy, took him completely out, was not in on any play. So, very, very good to see that. That's exactly what we need. And Coach Larrabee uh, is Ellerby is the guy that is making this happen. One of the absolute best offensive lineman coaches in the college football, maybe in pro level too. And he's getting really good dudes. So, and very, as you mentioned, when you're stealing guys out of Gainesville, that's good. Yeah, very excited though to see what's going on here. Nine commits total. Uh, and then last week we didn't we didn't do a show, so we didn't get to talk about it. Mike Wright, a quarterback, big time, big time guy, uh, out of College Park, Georgia. Um, what an arm this kid has! If you haven't watched his tape, go someplace. Huddle is the thing where you can find all that's, these kids. It's not that's spelled different though, right? It's a is H, it H U D L E or something like that yeah. instead of H U. I don't know. Um, but anyway, Mike Wright, uh, quarterback, College Park, Georgia, 6'3", 185. Obviously, we'll be able to put some weight on there, but the arm on this guy is amazing. Uh, can get it down the field, can run as well, um, and can also uh, just put it on a dime. I mean, every throw, obviously in highlight tapes, they're not showing the bad stuff, like I said again, but in his highlight tapes, he was making every single throw. And these throws being in spots where it's very hard to get him in. And, and they were just right in there with him looking like he was, you know, giving minimal effort to get them there. So what I liked about him, you're looking at that tape. I'm looking at how he used his own social media to really reinforce his commitment yeah. to UCF. Yep. He did his own video of highlights and things and uh just you see an evolution of the way these kids are using their social media not just posting you know they're visited such and such school or whatever here he actually put together a video um you know really uh celebrating his commitment to ucf well he had a heck of a list as well of offers arkansas boston college cincinnati bowling green um let me see here illinois Louisville, Minnesota, Mississippi, Ole Miss. Minnesota was really making a run for him. I, I yeah, remember. Georgia, Georgia Tech, North Carolina, Tennessee. Um, so he had a heck of a list. And then going back to that lineman that I was talking about, um, Mark Pitts, his list is very interesting. And we have a couple people that have guy that have offers like this. Harvard, Princeton, Rutgers, you know, I mean... You, 
Yale. Smart kid, huh? Harvard and Princeton. Harvard, Princeton, and Yale. Mm. Um, wow. Rutgers is a, is a school that's up there as well with with academics. Um, not so much with, with sports, but uh, yeah. Um, interesting that we're going, and he's not the only guy. I can't remember which, is the, which one is the other one, but we have another guy that was um, being recruited by all of those schools as well. So uh, I, I think that Hypel is going for people that not only have sports IQ, but actual IQ as well, which is very good. Um, I think it's awesome. I think well, that, you want smart guys. You've got to learn playbook. You've got to learn terminology. You know, when someone that's struggling with that and as well, academic risk kids, you know, so. Yeah, I can't. I'm see trying it. to look through here real quick to see who the other one was. And then, you know, of course, Jordan Davis, which is uh, Gabe Davis's brother, is also on this list of the nine for 2020. So very good. You know, another thing I've noticed on social media with these players is um, the ones that say I've I've narrowed down my list to 11. 11? Yeah. Come on, get it down to five or, or something before you're going out on Twitter. And then they're putting top, all the logos. Yeah. Is my it, top four. Well, I don't mind when they get it down to four or five, but you got to make an announcement at 11? Yeah. Oh, well, who'd you get rid of? Like one or two? I mean, <laughs> I mean, Some of them, yeah. I mean, I mean, good for you, and it's good to see you're being heavily recruited, but, geez, it's not American Idol or anything. You know, you're <laughs> narrowing it down every week. I mean, it's it's going to do kick one every week for 11 weeks until he makes his decision? The whole thing with, with college recruiting is, is a little ridiculous as far as... And now with this early signing period, it changes the calendar. It seems like this is a year-round activity in more ways than it ever was. It is, and, and I love... I, I do like... Like the the early thing now, I didn't like it so much the first year because we had issues with it with with Frost leaving yeah. right at the wrong time. Um, but now it actually really benefits us because all these guys that won't have time to think about it until February or whatever can can do it in in December. So. And that was a good video out from UCF Athletics this week showing those freshmen that were not early enrollees enrolling on campus and the coaches and fellow players greeting them when they came to the football uh, practice facility and the, yep. uh, Wayne Dench. Our, our kicker is finally here. Orbowski is here. I posted that on Twitter, reposted it a couple times, different places. That's a great thing that he made it and it's looking forward to seeing him play. Yeah, but, you know, it's coming up. Yeah, it's what coming a, up. Is, but we're in a sort of a slow time. I mean, any news happen? Anything happen? Um, well, there. I mean, it's really not that big of a deal. There's a school that has decided to to exit the. American. Where's that music? You got music for that? Oh don't yeah. You? Where's that Forgot music? Forgot about at? that part. It's uh, been a while. Well, it's been a year, know, hasn't it, since you pulled out this you know, music? Yeah, I think probably so. When when things start to get a little dramatic with. <laughs> stuff we we like to play this right here as the world turns all right so we're back into the as the world turns silly now. season but i'll tell you what this is pretty silly as i'm far not as I'm usually concerned. home very much on a saturday but uh home when this broke and then you know, that twitter machine i got sucked into that for a while yeah. and i'm talking to people not only knights fans but I don't know where all these other people came from. I got a guy from UTSA, U Texas San Antonio, messaging me. I'm, I'm like, you know, like, like I'm not deciding whether you get into the league, but you can message <laughs> me like what. <laughs> this, of course, with the news breaking that UConn, uh, which looks perhaps to be finalized with press conferences and all of that in this week, is announcing that it wants out of the American, wants Good to riddance. go to the Big East, and. I had to laugh at uh, at UCF guy twenty three. He goes, you know, it's funny. Just last night, I was thinking, man, I miss talking about college football. It's so quiet and so far away. Haven't heard anything about season tickets yet and what the gift is this year. Then this happens. <laughs> so I think everybody was like, okay, we've got some, we got a story to hook into. So what do you think of this? We didn't really talk about it, but uh, I guess kind for, of a crazy uh, story I mean, out of the blue. I understand for basketball. I get that. Uh, I mean, UConn didn't do that very well in the in the American last year, so for a number of years now, yeah, uh, won a national championship uh, early on in the and then days of the league. From then on, it decline. was pretty pretty low. Um, Football's been off the radar. They were already talking. There there was rumors last year during football season that they were going to take their uh, team to FCS. They were going to drop down because that's a 
that's a ship that's sinking there. They reportedly have lost forty million dollars in the athletic department, and uh, that's not good. And the majority of that, I'm sure, is from football. So I asked on our Twitter at UCF underscore Nightline, were UConn to leave the American? Does it reflect poorly on the AAC? 81% of respondents said no. Good riddance. I like this one from Kyle at the SOTG. Doesn't it reflect worse if they stay? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Well, I like that. Uh, yeah. So uh, the most mentioned uh, rumors in various, you know, articles that were out there, columnists, fans is uh, clamoring for a football only invitation for army um and a basketball and all sports your olympic sports and all of that to vcu virginia commonwealth oh. as it would be a boost you're looking with football uh really you know the big engine there you know you want someone that is how's, an upgrade over you how's vcu's football no football oh no no no, 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 no everything football. else yeah oh, they'd be like, everything okay. else all right sort of like navy is a football only invite and wichita state was everything else because they don't have a football program right right i see what um you're saying, no. and then this is what brought out of the woodwork uh, all kinds of people and again i was home for a little while so i just started i engaging. personally would love to see us have all the ac- the service academies that'd be awesome I mean, what other, what other uh, conference has the you know the American, and then there's our service guys at so. UCF Knights uh, own. Has anybody debated Middle Tennessee or Marshall for UConn's replacement? If they're talking about better CUSC, CUSA teams for football to step up on top of Marshall's dormant rival with us and recent stomping of the cows, and our buddy Jim Hadaway at JA Hadaway consider Troy as a team to replace UConn. Boise and San Diego State aren't going to join the Americans, so we have to be reasonable. A lot of people were floating that again, by the way. Yeah. Boise, BYU, San Diego State, which if you go back to the early uh, days of the American, that was a plan that was floated. Right. At Chris O'Brien 47, I love this one. Since Oresco, Commissioner Oresco, is such a big fan of two-for-ones, I'm hoping we can give away UConn and Tulane in exchange for Notre Dame. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Well, I posted on Twitter, uh, that's not going to happen, no. but uh, if we're getting rid of teams, uh, how about kick Tulsa out? What's Tulsa bring? Absolutely nothing. So I yeah. mean, I don't see what Tulsa brings. It's, they've got like 5,000 students, private school. Yeah. Uh, long way to go to get there for the other sports, not direct flights and all of that into Tulsa. And what do they bring? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, not that they're kicking teams out, but well, what's uh, who do you want? If um, if and they don't have to go. By the way, they don't have to add. Uh, they can play eleven. They can have uh, off balanced divisions. Uh, the Big Ten for some twenty years had an odd number, yeah. and they functioned, uh, so they don't have to. Well, what does that do with our championship game and all this other? It's just stuff? an off number in the divisions, and it would. I mean, they'd have to adjust their their schedules. So you know if. It's sort of funny now when it was what two years ago when the Big Twelve invited twenty schools yeah. uh, to dog and pony show and powerpoints right. and right. slick folders and all of that and said and they didn't want any of them. The cows spelling stuff yeah, wrong. Yeah, spelled stuff wrong. Well, they can't get out of their way, can they? That's so stupid. What was their thing this week? Uh, they did another goofy thing this week <laughs> with some logo or something. Um, another Merrill Lynch re- logo. Yeah, I can't remember what the thing was this week, but. Uh, and and the Big 12s basically, and I know it hurts if you're a UCF fan to hear, but they basically said not one of those schools make them more money than what they make staying at a 10-team. And team. that's totally not true, but anyway. That's their line. Yeah, But totally now, now we're in this position with the American. Um, and so this week, watch for it. Uh, you know, they need to get approvals uh, from their um, board of Trustees and I'm all sure of those things. I'm sure there's some money for the American. $10 million is the uh, exit Bio. fee to be negotiated. It's supposed to have a 27-month notice. Mm. They want this to be, you know, July... Well, July 1 in Florida is the fiscal year. I don't know if that's the same fiscal year for universities all over. I but think that's when we joined the American. The, so. They want to be out of all sports uh, at the end of this July next one, yeah, a year from now, yeah. basically a year from now. So they'd play one more football season um, in the American and, and and all the other sports. Boy, and, those football players have a lot to play for now, don't they? Well, how about trying to recruit them? Well, I mean, I know yeah. there's there's and 
who knows? And, but, you know, the Mac kicked out UMass because UMass wanted to be football only, and the Mac said, we want you in all sports, and UMass said no. Mm. So they're an independent. Oh. Does Conference USA want UConn? UConn's griping about well, I don't, I mean, I, games against yeah. ECU. No, I, I'm pretty sure that they're going to go down all the way. Or to, independent. Yeah. And then they're playing, uh, you know, a $1.5 million stomping at Tennessee. Or, you know, Florida likes to schedule those uh, one-and-dones at, at their place. So right. they'd, they'd pay UConn. And yeah. uh, who do you want? Do you want to stay at 11, or do you see a program that gives you everything? A service academy. That's That's my bottom line on the thing. Army would be perfect because they're independent. I think that would be great. Football only. Yeah. See, they used to be in Conference USA, and then they left Conference USA. They didn't like being in that league. Mm. Um, I don't know. I, at the sake of being called anti-American, I don't really, I don't really want Army in the league. I mean, that's another triple option team. You, yeah, you, that's you, true. Then when you have Navy on your schedule, I mean, they may not play that brand of football forever, but I see that in the short term. We kind of griped about it the year we had Navy and Georgia Tech on the schedule. Yeah, Georgia Tech got true. canceled. That we remember their style. The low cut blocks. Well, who, who else is an independent that could we? Well, could a name I floated, along. and I got well. I didn't get ripped. Uh, I got ripped a little bit. Was uh, I, I? I like UAB out of Conference USA. Well, yeah, they're building a downtown Birmingham campus. They really came along this year. A heck of a job rebuilding that that football team. And, uh, and they've had success program. through the years in basketball. Yeah, um, gives you a rival with. Tulane, uh, you know. We used to play them quite a bit back in the day, so. You know, you put them in the east, you move Navy to where it should be in the west. By the way, Navy does not belong in the east. They're in Maryland, you know. I mean, in the west, they're in Maryland. Yeah. They move them. Right. And, uh, but so the, the, the hot names are Army for football only and VCU. Uh, I've seen Dayton mentioned as a basketball and all sports. They're mm. not far from Cincinnati, so give them somebody. Yeah. So, um, interesting to see what happens this week. You know, they're going to try and negotiate out of this. Um, I think if ESPN weighs heavily in this because the you know the league just got their new TV deal. If, for example, the league said um, we want BYU in there and bring the parties together, then I guess maybe BYU. But you know, BYU by their own rules do not play games on Sundays. Right. So that's interesting scheduling when you have a three-game softball series that's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Or you know, basketball or whatever, you know, whatever. Well, so on Sundays, uh, yeah. every, everybody's intrigued by BYU. Um, oh, I'd take BYU for football, but that's a long way to go. I mean, some people Provo, uh, Utah is a long freaking way away. I, people trashing that when I said that on Twitter as well. Airplanes, it's not that far. Yeah. Well, that it's still. Two time zones, or, or they're not in central time, they're in mountain Mountain, time. at least, I yeah. think. Yeah. So that's two time zones, man. I mean, if you travel from here to California, there's jet lag <laughs> just just to there because of the time difference. And when you're a football player, any change in that schedule and your routine, that makes a big difference. It's just, uh, so. you know, you could see this in some ways. I know it kind of broke over the weekend and kind of came out of the blue, but... If you rewind a little bit, it was um, UConn Media, uh, women's basketball. They were very upset that the new league deal was yeah. going behind ESPN Plus as a paywall. Well, that they weren't going to be on the networks that they were on in the Northeast. And I'll tell you what, it's just funny to me that they're going to sacrifice their football program. Instead, I mean, you know, it was a decade ago, by the way, they were playing in a significant New Year's Day bowl, right. and through their own errors. Right, right. Uh, what was the guy's name with the civil conflict trophy? That guy. <laughs> so some questionable hires. Yeah. And your football program degrades. Is it the Americans' fault that UConn's gotten passed in men's basketball? That Houston is strong, Cincinnati strong. You see what Memphis is doing. No, UCF just, has had their run. No, but they want. They're more concerned. They're not concerned with nationwide. They're concerned with their little you northeast know, corner northeast corner of everything and, and those other teams that are there and playing at madison square garden and and stuff like that so that's what they're worried about and they're you know whatever i mean i, I don't really watch that big 10 conference or big, or big, east. big east conference no, in basketball I. so i, I mean, don't care. 
Yeah, it, it doesn't make it matter. It doesn't matter to me at all, and 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 good good riddance as far as I'm. So concerned, you can imagine so. what most of our Ask Nightline questions in the yeah. inbox are going to be about. So mm-hmm. we'll rehash this in a little bit. Continue to send us your ideas. I have seen everything. I've seen people supporting Army, Air Force. San Antonio, yeah. uh, Dayton, Marshall. Marshall uh, brought up as as a team. And well, Marshall, FAU, you know, FIU. Marshall, why would we want Marshall either of those? Marshall beat the cows recently. Yeah. That I mean, that puts them in some good standing. Would you want I think. FAU or FIU? No, I mean, you already got Tampa. I mean, we had Marshall before, um, and I know it's it's a it's a rivalry. Old That's, Dominion is one. I've got football. They're in now, Virginia. Old Dominion. They got basketball. They're a younger school. They have a great little campus there. You been? Too. Yeah, I've been there. We have done shows that there. Takes arena. you to a new market. Where are they yeah. in Norfolk or in that area Norfolk, of Virginia? Yeah. Norfolk. Um, so they're sort of my preference. And their is, football team did very well coming up through the the ranks into the FBS as well. My preference is one program, all sports, not another football only invite, and then another one. Uh, I think that gets unwe- I, I think, think it's weird. Yeah, I, I support Oresco on this. Not always a big fan of them, but I think Navy was a good addition Yeah, uh, for football. I'm glad we have Navy. And I think Wichita State has been a good addition. Yeah. Um, they were a little down in basketball, rallied a little bit at the end. Uh, but I think overall they were a good addition to the league. We'll see if he and the powers that be at the TV networks can decide on where they're going next with this and Watch for it this Still week. Say UCF more. needs to get out of this conference as quickly as possible. Oh, yeah. I know that remains on the agenda. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. More <laughs> perspective on Knights in the NBA. We're going to check in with Ben Stout for analysis when Nightline number 192 returns. Nightline, check us out. All the archives, nightlinesports.com. Keep you company during the summer. Hey, this is Travis Dever, Kai's Real Estate, the Dever team, New Smyrna Beach. Your source for real estate and everything else, New Smyrna Beach. Proud sponsor of Nightline and Nightline Post Game Live. Call me anytime at 386-690-1636. That's 386-690-1636. Let me show you my hometown, New Smyrna Beach, UCF's favorite beach. Go Knights and charge on. Let's talk about the long-term prospects for our newest Knights in NBA camps with former UCF men's basketball player Ben Stout. Ben joins us now on the Nightline Hotline. Been a while since we actually spoke with you, Ben. Yeah, it's good to catch up with you guys. How's it going? Doing well, doing well. I know going into this NBA draft, I'm wearing the black and gold glasses, but I really thought we'd get at least one guy drafted. So I got to tell you, I was a bit disappointed. What about you? Yeah, I was I was a, a bit disappointed as well. I uh, I'll, I'll confess that I uh, definitely nodded off there in the second part of that of that second round of the draft. It definitely drags on. Um, but I was I was a little bit disappointed with um, the amount of momentum that it seemed like Taco Fall had uh, over the summer, going to the combine and doing his thing. Really, not only showing off his measurables, but uh, doing so well in the scrimmage of, of both the G League um, elite camp and the uh, NBA combine. Um, I thought he really represented himself well, and I thought he had a ton of momentum uh, going into the draft that kind of that second part of the second second round um, was going to be a sweet spot to a team that was looking for some size and maybe had some creative coaching uh, to pick him up. But unfortunately, it didn't happen. Um, he did wind up signing a uh, – signing a deal to be on the summer league team and uh and try his try his hand at the training camp uh, after the draft of, with the celtics but i i was thinking that he was going to get picked up kind of in that 50s range um maybe as early as 45 maybe as late as you know 55 58 but uh it, it didn't happen for him and uh but and it didn't happen for any of our nights uh aubrey was kind of the most likely behind taco to get picked up and he lost a little bit of momentum after that spectacular performance um, against Duke, where it was probably the peak of his, his NBA prospects at that point. Um, but I was a little disappointed, but I, I'm thinking that these guys are going to have a chance to prove themselves through summer league and with the kind of high character guys they are uh, and the high caliber players they are, I think a few of them have a chance of, either making making the actual NBA roster or uh, signing a two-way deal where they can make some good money and uh, and hopefully get called up later on. 
Okay, well, I'm a guy that doesn't watch the NBA at all. Zero. I don't like it. It's, <laughs> it's not fun for me. I like college basketball, and, and it ends there. Um, what do these contracts, there's so many, there's Title X, there's G League, there's this, there's that. There's all <laughs> these different contracts. There's Summer League. What are these contracts that these guys mean? Are they actually going to get a shot at the NBA? Will they ever see the court in an actual NBA game? Um, I think that they've got a lot of work to do, Andrew, to make sure that they see see minutes, uh, see the floor, actual playing time on an NBA roster. Um, that's obviously their goal at the moment, being undrafted players and getting invites to be on these teams. Um, I think it's it's a little bit of a long shot right now because no team um, took a chance on drafting them, but it's certainly not out of the realm of possibility. I mean, we this past NBA Finals, uh, we saw a – extreme you know very high contributor and fred fred van fleet for the nba champions um the toronto raptors uh he was an undrafted player i mean obviously he's the exception versus the rule but uh these do play, some players do make it um and and are significant contributors they just got to wind up in the right situation uh, the second round of the NBA draft is no is there's no guarantee that they're actually going to even make the team. So in some ways, if you're going to be picked in the last like 10 picks of the draft, in some ways, uh, some people think it's just as good to be undrafted because you got a little bit of a choice on where to go. Um, so you're right about the contracts being a little confusing. I had to look up what an exhibit 10 contract uh, was. Over the last couple of days when I saw that Aubrey, it looked like Aubrey, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, uh, either of you have looked this up, but it looked like Aubrey Dawkins and Taco Fall were the two of the four that got picked up that actually signed this Exhibit 10 contract. Uh, I believe um, Chad Brown and B.J. Taylor, who both signed with our hometown team here, the Magic, I believe they just received Summer League invites. Uh, not quite the Exhibit 10 contract. Um, but the Exhibit 10 contract essentially means that they're going to play on Summer League. They're going to get kind of a preferred showcase um, uh, being on the Summer League team. And then they're guaranteed to be with the team at the beginning of training camp, which a lot of the guys that are just getting a Summer League invite are just trying to get to that next step, which is training camp. Um, and so, so with taco and aubrey signing an exhibit 10 contract they are guaranteed that they are going to be with the team and start out um for aubrey with the pelicans and taco with the celtics um they're made guaranteed in the in training camp if they get waived they can receive a bonus of up to fifty thousand dollars which is a nice chunk of change if you're not making any money right now uh for sure i think anybody would take that for what could be like a week's worth of work um, that being said, if they do make the, they, they have a better chance of making the team being invited to training camp and, um, they could sign eventually what's called a two way deal. And I don't want to get into all the business aspects of that, but essentially that means that they're going to be on the G league team, uh, with the chance of being called up at least two or three times a year to the main NBA roster. And if and whenever they're called up, they make significant amount of money for those games um, because they make the essentially the league minimum, which is a lot more money than I make. Let's put it that way. <laughs> All right. So for those of us that don't really follow the NBA as well, what's the summer league? What's that all about? Yeah, the summer league is all the all the. All the prospects that you saw get drafted on Thursday night. Um, all of those draft picks, unless they have an injury, which. Uh, the Magic drafted somebody who, who does have an injury, so we won't see Orlando Magic, uh, the first round draft pick uh, in the summer league. But you know, from Zion Williamson to John Morant, these top draft picks, they're all going to be playing um, at least a little bit uh, during the summer league. Um, and the summer league usually it runs early July. There's two. Um, uh, there's two kind of smaller ones. One in Utah. One in one in, uh, I believe, Sacramento. This is definitely California, and that that runs early July, and then um, and then kind of the second week of or third week of July is kind of the main one where most of the teams are, and that's in Vegas, uh, and that's almost all the NBA teams uh, with 
essentially their drafted players. It might be a couple of their second year players that they drafted last year. And then most of them are your um, are, are the guys that we're interested in, <laughs> for, for quite frankly. They're your undrafted signees, um, uh, the guys trying to make the roster or get a training camp invite. They're the, um, you know, what may have been a great college player, but uh, hasn't quite got that, you know, got that point to be drafted or anything like that. So it's, it's kind of a showcase for the young players of the NBA some of them trying to make a roster, others already high profile because they were just drafted. Well, this still seems to be like a a, a big deal for UCF to have the numbers, the, the four players or five players in this that we haven't seen before. I mean, usually it's like maybe one, uh, uh, you know, signing a, a G League thing or whatever. But at least there's, you know, there's like four guys. So, you know, that's yeah. that's progress. I, I would agree. I would agree, Andrew. Um, I mean, Matt Williams was able to sign a two-way deal with the Heat when he didn't get drafted. Um, and he just got an invite to the to the Summer League uh, being on the Heat affiliate. And, and he performed so well during that summer league. I don't remember exactly what he averaged, but his limited minutes that he got during the summer league, he was showcasing exactly who he was as a shooter and as a player. Yeah, his average was, was higher than any a... his average was higher than anybody else. Sorry to interrupt. I remember oh, no, no. three point average was higher than anybody else, I remember that in that exactly. uh, summer league. And exactly. So he was able to, you know, take that opportunity and run with it. And um and that's obviously what we're hoping our guys uh, our guys do this uh, this July. If we could go back into a time machine to early 2000s NBA, I think we'd be talking about Taco Fall went fairly high in this draft. Uh, the NBA game has changed over some two decades, and uh, Taco doesn't have all the skill set that they're looking for. They're looking for more of a shooter with someone his size and. What do you think his prospects are of making it through summer league and landing on a roster? Yeah, I, obviously I agree with you. Uh, we've, we've said it before, even when we were talking during the season and going into the um, kind of postseason of the, uh, this past college years, just if taco was playing when I played, for instance, in the early two thousands, uh, I mean, he would be, he would be looking at a, you know, lottery type potential, uh, you know, uh, NBA lottery pick. Um, it's just the game has changed dramatically since then. Um, it's no longer a, um, a forward or or center centric or playing in the paint type uh, type league. It's a run and gun. The big men uh, have, have to have the ability to step outside and shoot the jumper or or they're going to get a little bit left behind. And, and the way that translates or, or the way that's kind of just been unlucky for Taco Fall is not necessarily his, his post game could be a, incredibly elite. And, and he, you know, he's displayed that he's got very good footwork and he's displayed a few times, especially in, you know, some of the key games this, this past year against Houston, um, and, and even in the tournament, he displayed he's got some footwork and great post moves um, that he can do. But uh, the unfortunate part is, although he's a great rim protector, uh, I mean, most of the NBA centers are going to be stepping out beyond that three point line. So uh, just with the way the rules are in the NBA now, um, you can't just hang out in the paint. There's defensive three seconds. Um, it just doesn't really line up to his game, even from a defensive standpoint, because he's such a good shot blocker. Um, it's not like he can, like UCF, in U, his UCF career, he could just kind of hang out in the paint and really change the game from that perspective. The rules don't really allow him to do that. And also the players that he's guarding against are going to be stepping out beyond that three-point line and kind of takes his advantage out of the game. Um, that being said, obviously I'm a, I'm a huge taco fall fan. I believe in him and I believe w what he can do. And I'm hoping that he lands with a kind of creative coaching staff that, uh, really wants to see what he can do. And I was really happy to see that he wound up with the Boston Celtics, um, because Brad Stevens and his staff, they're one of those, you know, he just recently was a college coach not too long ago, you know, less than five years ago. Uh, Brad Stevens was 
you know, leading Butler to the final four and all that. Um, and so I think getting on a staff like that, that probably has a little bit of creativity and is used to uh, kind of molding young players into, uh, into maximizing their potential. Uh, I think that was a good spot for him to wind up. I, and I, and I hope it does pay off for him. Um, a lot of the times when these, when these players start out with a summer league team, they don't wind up on that, on that particular roster. They, there's a lot of movement in the off season, but um, if I think Boston was probably one of the best spots for taco. That creative coach though, may end up being somewhere overseas. That may be the better opportunity for him uh, going forward. Uh, switching to Aubrey Dawkins. If you follow instant reaction on Twitter and other social media, the theme was, see, he shouldn't have left early, which I think <laughs> is not taking into consideration that this is a guy who just turned 24, who had to sit out two seasons, who'd been in college for a number of years. Um, what was going to be a greater opportunity for him than the showcase game against Duke? And now he's signed a deal with New Orleans, uh, who's maybe had a draft pick with some higher profile, Zion, uh, I believe, <laughs> uh, I think is his name. Uh, I don't know about the fit there in New Orleans, but, you know, uh, Johnny Dawkins' son, being around the game all his life, he's a mature kid, uh, great basketball IQ. I like his chances, maybe not in New Orleans, but somewhere. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I, I And... and to react to your kind of first notes there, um, obviously, selfishly, we'd love to see Aubrey Dawkins back in a Knights uniform. Um, he would he would probably dominate this year, average over 25 points, maybe even 30 points, who knows, uh, really showcase his skills. But um, a lot of people forget that Aubrey Dawkins went to prep school after high school. So he's six years removed at the moment from high school uh, athletics. So uh, I, I think with his injuries in the past and with that huge showcase at Duke, he just he just had to make the decision that's right for himself. And I, I certainly can't blame that for him, whether he got drafted or not. Um, him winding up new, with New Orleans is really interesting because of because of Zion. Um, that means more exposure for the New Orleans a summer league team. And that's fantastic. I mean, that more than likely actually I was just looking up the schedule for summer league, uh, not too long ago. And I believe I saw almost all of the, while most of the games are on ESPN U or, or NBA TV, the first game that new Orleans is going to play. And I'm pretty sure all the games that new Orleans are going to play in the, um, in the summer league is going to be on ESPN, the main network. So, I mean, a lot of exposure for him, uh, What's interesting about New Orleans that could be a slight negative for uh, for Aubrey Dawkins is the fact that New Orleans is one of three teams in the NBA that does not have a G League affiliate. Um, they do not. They don't have a G League team um, that is their main affiliate. But that doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to work against him. Um, I mean, if he, can, if he can really show out, just like Matt Williams did, like we talked about earlier. Um, just like Matt Williams did a few few seasons ago, if he can really show what he's capable of and um, and that and show what his influence is and his maturity can be on that locker room, um, I think he's got a great chance of signing with another team and hopefully seeing seeing the floor this year on an, on a main NBA roster. It'd be it'd be awesome. And then there's B.J. Taylor, local Orlando kid. He ends up with a team he grew up watching, the Orlando Magic, would seem to me, with his skill set, uh, you know, there are some opportunities for him maybe to uh, impress upon the Magic that he'd be a good fit for them. I agree. I was I was so pumped to see BJ um, getting picked up to play in the Summer League of the Magic because, I, I, obviously, I've told you before, I used to work for them. They've been my favorite NBA team my whole life. Um and that is a position of need, um, unless Markel Fultz, you know, completely recovers. Um, I mean, really, their only point guard of note is DJ Augustine on the on the Magic roster. And what they really need from the guard, from the point guard position, is somebody who has the ability to distribute the ball, but also has the ability to hit some big shots. And nobody 
from <laughs> and UCF history probably had the ability to hit big shots like BJ Taylor. So um, I agree with you. I think that he's going to make a great impression on them. Uh, he already has clearly if they, they wanted to be on their team for the summer league. Um, and I think that his, you know, true leadership abilities and his, his ability to really play well and um, shoot the basketball well is going to give him a real chance to make that make that roster or or at least be in, again be invited to training camp and and further prove what he can do. And also, what's great about him being picked up by the Magic is their G League affiliate is right there in Lakeland. You talk about a local kid, um, you know, being over there in Lakeland, if he's uh, able to, you know, if he doesn't make the big roster, able to sign a two-way deal, which would be a great setup for him, kind of staying home, being at Lakeland and uh, coming on over quickly to um, to the Magic Games uh, if he gets called up every once in a while. It, it'd be a great position for him. And it's something that the Magic have already done. What they did it with a guy named Isaiah Briscoe last year that was on their G League team, and and they moved him up for a significant amount of games uh, last year. So it's not unprecedented for uh, the G League uh, G League point guard with the Magic to be brought in and um, and and on that main NBA stage. Well, I will say if B.J. Taylor winds up on the, uh, the the real main game day roster for the Magic, I will actually pay attention to the NBA and I will watch the Magic. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that because that stuff like that makes me want to watch it, you know, oh, absolutely. Um, with a guy, you know, that we've watched for, you know, since his freshman year at UCF, that would that would would make my interest a lot more in watching the magic our hometown team yeah i mean what a compelling story right a kid grew up in orlando went to boone high school signed with the you know hometown orlando team in ucf and then and then you know gets brought up and and play makes the game day roster and, and plays some minutes for uh, the Orlando Magic. I mean, that's just that's just stuff you can't write scripts about. So I, obviously, I'd be extremely excited as well, and all of Night Nation would be. As Andrew said earlier, just the sheer number of guys that have inked deals. There's also Chad Brown who inks with the Magic, and then Sunday, AJ Davis. You remember that name inking with the Seventy Sixers, and there's still opportunities for a Dayon Griffin out there as well. So if not the NBA, there's the G League, and then there are opportunities overseas where a lot of guys go to, uh, you know, play games and get paid well. Of course. I mean, two guys, I, two uh, multiple guys that I even played with back in the early 2000s, uh, UCF, a lot of guys are still playing overseas. Uh, I mean, we've... Um, you know, Adam and Mike talk talked to Dexter Lyons, who made a you know entire career playing around the world. Um, you know, he's a guy. Obviously, there was a the main guy on that 04 team that I was a part of. Um, Kerry Johnson has played all. I mean, these there's so many nights that I, I can't even name them all that are either still playing overseas or had great careers overseas where they got to travel the world, get paid well, provide for their family, and play the game they love for a long period of time. Um, and so whether or not they're on a G league or any type of NBA affiliate or actually on a main NBA team, um, I think all five, all six of those guys, uh, if you're including AJ Davis, um, who's already made a little bit of a career of it, um, in his first year playing professionally, I, I think they've all got a great chance if they'd like to, to continue to, uh, play basketball, make good money, and and enjoy the game that that they love. All right, a little curveball here. What's your favorite color? What's my favorite color? Yeah, green. <laughs> so green I'm, is my favorite color. I'm picturing you now in a green suit uh, on the NBA draft night. <laughs> <laughs> What about those yeah. fashion choices? Uh, yeah, you got yeah. guys in purple. You got guys in pink. Um, I'm picturing you seven uh, foot plus of you in a green suit, a very tall shamrock is what I've got. Right there. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what, there was, there was actually a guy that got drafted by the Milwaukee bucks, um, that I, he must've known something because he had a, he had a pretty, uh, he had a very green suit on, uh, that was, it was, he definitely stood out. I, I can't even think of who it was, but I remember 
my wife and I saying, like, I wonder if he knew he was going to get drafted by the Bucks. <laughs> well, would you, uh, if Taco Fall makes the Celtics, would you have a green Taco Fall Celtics jersey? Oh, man. It'd be, uh, <laughs> I'm definitely not a, uh, not a Celtics fan by any means. Uh, that being said, I'm obviously a huge taco fan. Uh, I'm not really a Jersey wearing guy, uh, but I'll certainly root, root hard for him. I don't know if I'll be <laughs> representing any type of, with any jerseys anytime soon. All righty. Well, Ben, BJ, thank you. BJ okay. makes the magic though. That might be a different case. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I may even buy one if he makes the, the magic. Oh, listen to this. He's buying a Jersey. He's rooting for the team. He may be going to game. Well, if if our hometown kid let's is all on there. go to let's all go to a magic game when BJ or Chad are on that uh, yeah. on that team. We oh should. my goodness, yeah, absolutely. We'll fun. we'll have to plan on that if he if he if he gets called up. <laughs> Do they have a section eleven forty eight at the Amway for the eleven forty eight studios? <laughs> section one forty eight. I'm sure we yeah, could sit we can there. find that. All right, Ben. Thank you so much, man. We really appreciate it. Uh, I guess that that pretty much does it for our basketball talk for a little while, but uh, I'm sure hoping that we will see you for football games at our tailgate and everything else, man. Oh yeah. Me and my family will be there. We uh, we're certainly excited for football season coming up and, um, and yeah, most immediately uh, it'll be the first time in years that I'm really paying a close attention to summer league. And I'm hoping these guys show out well and uh, really represent themselves and, and make it to the next step. Um, uh, I'm I'm really excited for them, and I think they're they're going to do well for themselves, regardless if they're on an NBA roster next year or not. Actually, yeah, I forget about this summer league thing, so we may talk to you about that still. So it's not the end for Ben Stout yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, any time, guys. I'm, I'm ex- yeah, obviously always uh, pumped to talk uh, talk any night nice sports with you guys. All right, man. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. All right, good to talk to Ben again. What color would your suit be? Uh, probably black. black. So nothing crazy? No, black or blue. I think with these guys in the summer league, I think there'll be other opportunities to talk to Ben uh, if he has opportunity to check him out. Um, I know a lot of fans will want to watch and see how those guys do. It'll be yeah, interesting oh, to yeah, see him in different sure. uniforms, of course. It will. It'll be very interesting to see what's going on there. All right, another Hoops News schedule pairings are announced. The Knights play seven teams twice, four teams just once. Two at home only and two on the road only. The Knights host Memphis and Temple and road onlys at Houston and UConn. Means we may never see UConn here in Orlando playing the Knights again. It's true. Since we're just going to go there. Yeah. 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 Uh, former Texas A&M guard Brandon Mann has transferred to UCF. He'll have to sit out a season, but it, then he will have two seasons of eligibility. Johnny Dawkins continues to tinker with the roster. Uh, We'll have to spend some time on that at some point soon. Yeah. Getting to know the new Knights. Absolutely. There's a bunch of them. And former UCF head coach Donnie Jones keeps adding former Knights coaches to his staff at Stetson. The latest to join, Brendan Sir. Have you added Donnie Jones back on Twitter? I'm not sure. I I don't think I'm still blocked, I'm sure. Nightline's blocked, but not. Maybe yours. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Let me uh, let me figure that, that out. Was that at AP underscore? AP night? underscore Nightline. One more uh, basketball note coming this Sunday, and it's uh, just read the Twitter post from basketball legend Rick Barry, who says, I'm so sad for Jermaine Taylor, a player on my uh, Ball Hogs Big Three team who ruptured his Achilles in today's first game of the Big Three season. Uh, praying his operation and rehab are successful. So uh, just a tremendous former night basketball player. Looks like I already follow Donnie Jones. You did follow Donnie Jones? Johnny Johnny Jones. What did I say, Donnie Jones? Yeah. I say Johnny Jones. yeah, yeah. Anyway. Anyway, a a tough, tough to hear uh, Jermaine Taylor. Achilles. Yeah, that's a bad injury, too, no matter what Long recovery. um, That sucks. uh, That's, boy. I hate, I hate to I hate to see that this Sunday, and it was just the start of the season too. Yeah, so not good. Uh, I want to thank Ninja Pete for your five star review that reads: "I'm a 2014 UCF graduate who relocated out of state for work after college. This is the podcast. If you want to keep up with the Knights, they have hands down the best news, analysis, and interviews from the UCF universe." Thank you, Ninja. I like your handle, yeah. Ninja. We welcome your reviews, too. Be sure to uh, like us on our Facebook page. Follow us on Twitter at UCF underscore Nightline. Always like those five-star reviews. Is Ninja reviews. Pete really a ninja, though? <laughs> this is what I want to know. Let us know, Ninja Pete. Yeah. 
What does that mean if you're really a ninja? Well, there are ninjas. I mean, are there mostly in the eastern part of the world? <laughs> okay. So, Pete, I don't know. LinkedIn profile. Yeah, let's see. Ninja. <laughs> <laughs> All right, stay with us. You've heard us talk about the great food at our good friend Kyle Israel's restaurant, The Little Greek Fresh Grill. The Little Greek now has franchises available. Please call 407-697-2272. That's 407-697-2272 to see what The Little Greek can do for you. Also, check out The Little Greek's newest location at 6536 Old Brick Road in Windermere, Florida. The Little Greek Fresh Grill. Fresh, flavorful, fabulous. Coming up on this week's AAC Report Only on the Nightline Sports Network, I'll be joined by Dan Brecklin, sports editor of the Hartford Current, to discuss UConn's move to the Big East in 2020. What does it mean for the Huskies? What does it mean for the AAC? And what does it mean for the Big East? And with this breaking news of the weekend, it really demonstrates how polarizing the American is with all the talk of if another team should be added or if so, who should it be? Thank you, UConn, for bringing a little juice to summertime discussions. I'm Jeff Allen. We'll catch you this week with the AAC Report, only on the Nightline Sports Network. All right. Well, Jeff is doing such a great job. I'm glad. Book and guess. How about yeah, him all over this I'm UConn thing? I'm glad that this, this is uh, going on, because it does. It gives him some juice. <laughs> I like, the, I like that. That's good. I like that. Well, no better guest to have than someone to talk about that Yukon situation. Yeah, and that's very good. good. The only show of its kind in all of the Americas. Yep. The AC Report with Jeff Allen. Yep. Doing a great job. As are the sons of UCF. Absolutely. Yeah. Those guys are knocking it out of the park. Yeah. I Every love week. It. Yeah. Every week. Well, they're taking some some weeks off too here it's but summer yeah we gotta we all have to we're we're uh trying hard to find something to talk about here by the way speaking of that now did you you, you listen to the last show well not this show the show before that where they were having a little fun with some uh, twitter rivalries uh, where you know things got out of control for half a day on yeah, twitter yeah. with some personalities some yeah. people and and they uh, they were trying to pick a fight with another podcast. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, which which has led to some nonsense, I think. Someone's um, let's see if I can find it. Someone's posted. Um, there's a series of polls uh, about who would win between these two oh, shows yeah, in a yeah, fist yeah. fight. Yeah, and, yeah. and I don't I don't really want to get into this whole uh, yeah, well, night on night crime no, as I like yeah, to call it, yeah. but. Uh, uh, we happens. we have advanced uh, yeah. to face uh, uh, another show. And, it happens. Uh, and I don't. It's I all don't good. Promote oh, there's this. a tournament. Yeah. Oh. So each uh, hmm. the shows are pitted. Oh, against I would, one I would win all of them. So you know. Yeah. I'm not and there. remember, if if we get pitted against the sons of UCF, uh, no, they're out. They're out. They lost oh, the out. fist fight battle. Oh. So well, um, okay. Well. Yeah. Because you know I pretty much. Didn't we talk about this at one point? I though? published that. <laughs> I published these a couple other shows. So they'd have no chance. <laughs> <laughs> they'd have no chance whatsoever. They'd have no yeah. chance. I want to address one other thing. I would just uh, turn the off button. People seem genuinely thrown every so often by the initials at the end of posts. Yeah. They ask, a it's, lot, it's what does TT and AP mean? It's just our initials. Yeah. Just to distinguish who's writing it. Yeah. And I sometimes, if you don't see any of it, that's usually me because I forget. Yeah, so. I'm pretty good about remembering and yeah, I, I will put my own uh, Twitter name in there a lot of times too if I'm doing it. Yeah, it's and at I, Fear the Pegasus, who I like. But the question is, uh, let's see if um, this one other show. Can we mention? We can mention. Right? We don't care. Uh, the one night stand folks can do it against the big dogs at UCF Nightline. Who wins? In a prison style, no holds barred podcast prison fight. Style. Pri- I don't know what that. What oh that man, that's a that's a that's a big deal right there. That's shanks and all. So I said, I, I just said to him, I like Fear of the Pegasus, but I said I'm you know I'm not getting into all of this fight. Well, and night on night crime. And then he said, no, well, "Are you scared?" We I'm have like, no uh, problem with the the uh, one night stand podcast or the Sons of UCF or others. Others, yeah. <laughs> what it is though? There's hashtag really content. And 
there didn't used to be anything. And what I said about this entire thing before is we are all passionate about what we're talking about. And also some things on Twitter, as you all well know, can be taken a little bit stronger than they seem or not as strong as they seem sometimes or taken the wrong way because there's not there's no typed communication is different than spoken communication written communication it's just different you can't see the person's face to see if they're you know squinting while like they're smiling or if they're you know steam's coming out of their ears mm-hmm. like they're pissed off so things can be taken a little bit more strongly than they they need to be. So it's all good. Everything is good. Everybody is happy with that. By everybody. the way, we're losing in this poll. 56 to 44%. Who are we against? One Night Stand. Oh, well. Who would win in a prison-style no They have a lot part. of Twitter followers, and I don't really understand that. But they've got tons and tons. they got way more Twitter followers, which is whatever. I don't know. It is what it is. I'll let you fight. It's all good. No, I'm, I'm out of it. I'm, I'll let you fight. Anyway, time to get to know us. Oh, boy. Getting to know you, getting to know all about you. Can we put an end to this? Can we're this... doing it until football camp starts. Oh, until camp football starts. starts uh, well, you can or end camp it any... starts. Camp, yeah, yeah, camp. Hasn't camp started yet? No. When does it well, start? Well, we can end it at any time. I'm just... Well, yeah, I'm things. Kinda, I'm... I... You got nothing else. Yeah. I just... I use them in other parts, and I forget about keeping them, like the you know the one I talked about earlier. <clears throat> so, excuse me. Um, I can't remember. I talked about this some weeks back, where I had eleven different jobs in one year after I graduated high school. Yeah, I can't remember which job or jobs I talked about. I talked about the one at the mall. Yeah, you talked with about the, the mall. sportswear stuff. Mm-hmm. I, and I worked at two different fast food places after I graduated high school. Yeah. Um, the roast beef place. You didn't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Rack's, Rack's Roast Beef. Oh, I remember Rack's. Newport Ritchie, Pasco County. That That's was... A, it was a national chain, though, yeah, Rack's, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know how. Did I they have a there. cute girl? With <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> Is that what they called no. her, Rack's? I got... Now it's Hooters, right? Yeah. <laughs> I got locked in the freezer. That was not good. Oh. For about 20 minutes. Oh, wow. That was not good. Was your um, cooling off period? I had I was making a milkshake, and uh, you know the paper cup, zzz, zzz, you know all that, yeah. and the blade caught the cup and flung the blueberry milkshake onto the woman who was purchasing. Oh, it. awesome! And she was wearing a white sweater. Oh, yeah. People, she, they don't like that. She by was the way. upset. Yes. Yeah, I, I struggled there. We had a very cold day. They assigned me to making coffee. That's mm. all you got to do. You got to make sure because everybody coming in or going through the drive-thru is going to want coffee, and I got distracted and uh, stopped making coffee. Uh oh, and they weren't happy with me no. there either. I got some fast food tales to yeah. tell. Yeah, I worked at, at a couple fast food places back in high school. I worked at McDonald's for a little while, but then I was stolen away from McDonald's and hired by the the, the rival across the street, Taco Bell. At Taco Bell. The manager, the manager, one of the managers, was selling drugs through the drive-thru. <laughs> yes. And... You want fries with that? No, you would, you would say you wanted extra, extra, extra green sauce. Oh. And he would give you the, the bud through the window. And I basically said to him at one point when I figured it out, I'm like, all right, you either cut me into this whole deal or, you know, I, I might have to talk. So, I did. He didn't cut me in, so he got fired and arrested and all kinds of things. It happened to be a cop that came through the window one day and did that, and it wasn't good. Nowadays, I probably wouldn't do it like that. <laughs> <laughs> Nowadays, that probably wouldn't be the way that I would do it. But ba- back then, I was you know a little bit more pure than I am now. Uh, so. Yeah, and then uh, what was my other one? I had another one with a fast food thing. Dang it, now I forgot. But that was, yeah, that was the big story. Um, Oh, I worked at a, like, restaurant. Oh, I mean, it was probably 10 years ago. 
I worked there for about a week. Um, I had a huge tray of drinks. I was just, you know, kind of between jobs. This was when I was doing the the sound stuff, traveling around with with bands and shows and stuff, and I kind of needed something. And I got a job. I knew some people in Destin and hung out there for, you know, a little while. And uh, so I got a job at this little restaurant, really nice little little place. Um, but we put our drinks on big trays. And I had a huge tray of drinks, like anything you could imagine. There was a bottle of wine in the middle of that thing. And there was there was iced tea. There was sodas. There were beers on there. It was a huge tray because this this group had like 16 people and if you've ever done that and you have to take the drinks off of there exactly the right way so it has to remain balanced you have to remember Mm -hmm. how they were put on there and when you lift it you have to just know well i didn't really know (laughs) i wasn't very good at it (laughs) so an entire tray of drinks i mean i'm talking 16 drinks that were on this thing it was heavy Landed on a lady. Oh, all of them. I think that trumps the uh, yeah. blueberry milkshake on the white sweater. Yeah. She, they got their meal for free. I imagine they yeah. would. She did anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was ugly. She was wearing like a nice, you know, this was a beach community, you know, so a nice thin white, you know, dress, maybe a little decoration on there, but it had a lot more decoration when she left. <laughs> <laughs> and she, it was very cold too. So. Yeah. See, so you're coming up with material. Yeah, well, I, you have to start it off, and then I can think about these I things. worked at Little Caesars for a while. That's pizza, pizza. horrible. Is it true that... <laughs> no, what, it's what's true commercial that you now? water down the sauce, that you open a big can of sauce, and you water it, you basically three or four times the amount of sauce, you add water to it oh, I'm to sure. water down the sauce. Nah, that was what horrible. is it, un- ridiculous amounts of... of stuff that they put on top have you seen the commercial recently okay ridiculous amounts of stuff um yeah i never really did pizza i worked at sonic for a little while i made the onion rings and we made those like (laughs) totally truly like with onions we had this machine that made you just put the we had these giant crates of onions and you just bam and then all of a sudden they were onion rings it's crazy so those were actually made in the store in our basement was this like long machine speaking of onion rings i want to wish a happy national onion ring day to the sons of ucf on a recent show they i think it was a cow of the We're week they don't about all like kinds of different yeah. and now whenever i learn of one i copy them on twitter and wish them a happy donut day or happy onion ring day and it was donut day i think that yeah. pushed it over the yeah. line for them well yeah, i, I like mean to include them i, I like these days i don't mind it Especially mm. if you know what they are. A lot of times, if it's National Donut Day, the place will give away a donut or something. So. Yeah, yeah. Onion ring day. Is that today or yesterday? It was the other, it was the other day. Oh, okay. The other well, day. what's coming up? I but mean, I, well, they got a maybe list. We if you need just to... Google that, there's all sorts of stuff. Okay. But, um, all right. Well, we, you know, when football camp starts, we'll put an end. We'll have plenty to talk about. Yeah. And I've got several more jobs to work through. All right. You know, before we end this little program, okay. yeah. yeah, it's it's fun. I like it. It's just uh, I'm passing not... the time in the summer, kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, who will have the better pro career, Aubrey Dawkins or Taco Fall? That is a question in Ask Nightline when one Nightline one ninety two returns. Spice up your company with homemade marketing services from Tasty Gravy Creative. Tasty Gravy serves up a menu of budget friendly marketing, graphic design, and public relations services customized to your specific goals. Co-owned by a UCF graduate, Tasty Gravy can help refresh your brand, strengthen your online presence, or reinforce your company's message. Contact Tasty Gravy for help with your website, social media, marketing, advertising materials, and more. Visit TastyGravy.com. Hey, Night Nation. It's Adam from the Sons of UCF. Be sure to check out our show every Wednesday only on the Nightline Sports Network. Now, back to two guys who probably won't be Cow of the Week nominees, Andrew and Trace. Ask a Nightline is brought to you by Chad Bar Law. Chad is a UCF alumnus and diehard Knights fan. Chad Bar Law handles auto accident, slip and fall, and personal injury cases. Call Chad today at 407-599-9036 for a free consultation. That's 407-599-9036. Armor up and call Chad Bar Law today.
Time again for your favorite segment, Ask Nightline. We answer questions you post to us on our Facebook page or via Twitter at hashtag Ask Nightline. At facts underscore UCF with four questions, by the way, I mentioned four. four. I mentioned, you know, Manny Amoris yeah. uh, once asked four questions, and now I refer to it as the Manny Amoris exemption when we allow someone to ask four questions yeah. and read them. Well. And got a nice mention on Twitter from Manny saying, these exemption mentions make me smile every time. Well, good. So he's That's... part of the family. Absolutely. Uh, and I think we've addressed some of Fax's questions. He, one was who joins the AAC, uh, or UCF has its exit plan and it doesn't matter. Well, uh, who, does it, who do we think will really make it in the NBA? Uh, we, I don't know that we really okay. we speculated a little yeah, bit, but what do you think? We I, can go there. I'm going to go that I think... Taco ends up overseas. I think uh, BJ has a chance. If not, he ends up in Lakeland with the Magic. I would say Aubrey Dawkins. If I had to say who's on a roster this fall, I'm going to go with Aubrey. But I, I could see BJ making it, I think, yeah. because of Taco's, uh, you know, just not the ability to shoot from the well, outside, not as athletic. I don't see yeah. him making it. Taco is the oddity <clears throat> and will always be the oddity uh, with his size. And we saw a tremendous change and tremendous uh, growth, not as in tall growth, but we saw a lot of growth in his basketball skill by being coached properly in the last couple of years. And I'm wondering, in the NBA, there's a lot of guys that can coach better than in college foot in college basketball. So I'm thinking that Taco... Because he's the oddity, because he's the story, you know, it, it's like a circus. Come and see this seven yeah, foot six guy. But I don't think the NBA. I, I don't think that they're going to do sideshows like that. I mean, well, I th- they always did with Shaq and and Yao Ming. Well, or Yao was it Ming? I think it was Yao Ming, right? Yeah. But yeah. they also had a lot of yeah. skill. Come on, now they had a lot of talent. They do, but not the Taco. I think that Taco can develop a lot more. Um, skills but i'm gonna say with the work ethic i'm gonna say bj that's the person that i want to see on a roster the most i think because of his heart and his worth work ethic is unparalleled as far as what we've seen recently for ucf so that's what i'm gonna say. at adam terror was of dawkins and fall he was of those two. I'm oh, going to stick Dawkins. With, no, and that's Paul. Adam Tara's question. Oh. Those two. I'm sticking with Dawkins between oh, okay. those two. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. His question you were... is. His question was just two. The yeah. other question was all four. Okay. Well, I I will say fall. I'll go with fall on on Adam's question as well, though. All right. The fourth question from Matt Fax underscore UCF on Twitter. What about FAU, Stanford, Pittsburgh in a row? Concerns? Yeah, I'm concerned about everything. <laughs> <laughs> well. Here's why. I'm more concerned for Stanford because they have they have a pretty rough going at the beginning as well. So We will talk more breaking down the season yeah. as we get closer. Again, I have said Temple, Cincinnati, uh, FAU, Pittsburgh, those were home games. They're road games. And that concerns me that you could have a stumble somewhere. Remember, you're talking about a program that has gone back-to-back undefeated regular right. seasons. It's going to happen. We we have got to prepare ourselves yeah, that there it's could be, happen. you know, and we've we've laid out. Yeah, there's a lot of talent coming back, but we don't have the kicker, the punter, the, the well, uh, we don't the have holder. the main part well, of we, the we whole have, deal, Mackenzie Milton. We don't have either. the, the yeah. same quarterback. Yeah. Uh, we've got That's changes the, on the line, defensive line. I mean, so yeah. you know, could you lose? What I'm getting at on the special teams, that still concerns me. That's not to say that these kids that come in aren't going to step in yeah. and do a good job. Yeah. But when we spoke with the special teams coach during spring camp, he said you can only simulate these things so much. Yeah. When you are uh, backed up to your him. goal line, yeah, it's always I'm when tired. I'm talking. I'm tired. Yeah. Um, you can only simulate these things in practice so much, but when you're pressed against the, the back line, you got to get a punt off. You knew Mac Loudermilk could get that punt off. Do we know the new kid? We don't even know his name. Yeah. Can do that. Yeah. Uh, you know, fortunately, because the offense has been so prolific, Matt Wright, Matty Ice didn't have to make that three seconds left in the game, 47-yard field goal to yeah. win. If we're in a situation we'll at Orbowski, Cincinnati, though. will he do it yeah. if he wins the job? I, I think Orbowski is going to be a great kicker. So, yeah. Um, at UCF, Selena, she's got two questions. 
Uh, the okay. first is, um, it's a good one, I think, uh, this first one here. What's the likelihood of UCF finding a decent opponent to schedule if UConn joins the Big East All Sports by 2020 as planned? Will they stay on our schedule as an um, out-of-conference game? It's yeah, not maybe. a lot of time for us to find a quality team to fill that vacant spot on the 20 schedule. I think yeah, that's an interesting point. It is point. a good question. It'll be interesting to see what Commissioner Oresco uh, negotiates with the uh, UConn. Again, some of the key points there is well, $10 there... million dollar buyout, 27-month notice. They don't want 27 months. They want 12. Yeah. Will the American acquiesce to that? You know, I, I understand they want out, right. but do they get to leave I like that? Mm-hmm. Um, I hope so not. I, I do think, because because that question that Selena asked is the same question that everybody who has so UConn on their 2020 a, yeah. schedule is they thinking would, the same they thing. They would make a great FCS opponent. <laughs> Yeah, if they're if they even have a football program at all, then they may just cancel it completely. But everybody that has UConn on the schedule in twenty twenty yeah, is asking that same somebody. question, yep. which means all the teams in the East and three in the West are asking that same question. Yep. And so everybody that has them on non conference schedules and everything else. Yeah. So, so same yeah. question. Uh, Selena's other question was Bob Diaco's civil conflict the beginning of the end for UConn football. Well, it certainly didn't help matters. Yeah. I, I, it probably was, yeah. It'll be a footnote in their non-storied football history. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we've talked about Adam Terra's question. At Golden Knight underscore the second, with UConn leaving, does our strength of schedule improve? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Yeah, I like that. I think it does. Yeah. That's fun. At uh, W. Prell Brock 4, this is a question I teased earlier. More successful football program, UConn, or as he refers to them, West Central, the Cows. UConn uh. has been to more New Year's Six games, but, uh, you know, West Central has more two-for-one deals. <laughs> oh, jeez. Well, you talk about that. So UConn won the national championship in 2014 in basketball. Mm-hmm. Women's basketball, we know what sort of force that they have been. Yeah. Uh, while the Cows have a good women's basketball program, their men's basketball program has languished, and as he points out, they have had more success on New Year's Day than the Cows. Cows that's true. Uh, have not won anything. So, yeah, that's true. So the that's more true. successful program, even though we're kind of ripping on them a little bit, is, yeah. is planning to leave. Was it, was I can't remember. What conference was UConn in before the American? Were Big they East. in the Big East? They were yeah. in the original Big East? They were in the original Big East. In football and everything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Huh. Hmm. Yeah. That's Things interesting. That I forgot home. about that. I couldn't mm-hmm. remember. All right, so we got some of those Manny Amoris exemptions in there. Yeah. Uh, lots of people to ask some questions. It's, good. it's always like when people... A lot of comments, though. Uh, I've tried to weave some of those into the show. A lot of people had comments on all the different programs that they might consider adding. And We shall Selena's see. Selena's a big um, Army and Air Force uh, person, wants all the service academies in the league. Yeah, well, she was a, she was a form of served uh, yeah. in the military, yeah. so I can see why. And I'm in agreement. I want all of those in the American, if possible, personally. That's so. it. All right. Everybody, thank you. As always, you can uh, post those questions. Don't have to be when we ask. You can do it any time during the week. Uh, just hashtag Ask Nightline. Awesome. And now, news and notes from the world of UCF sports. Women's basketball, the AAC, announces its pairings for the 2019-2020 season. The the 12 schools play a 16-game league schedule. Each team plays five of its 11 opponents twice and six once each. UCF's three at home are East Carolina, SMU, and Wichita State. Road only is at Houston, Tulane, and Tulsa. Little baseball news, hellos and goodbyes. Uh, hello to former Knights pitcher Ben Lively. He was uh, moved from the Kansas City Royals organization to Arizona Diamondbacks. He'll be at the AAA team in Reno. And a goodbye to now former Knight Dallas Beaver, who's transferring to South Carolina. Mm. They were really counting on him yep. for next season. Uh, you know, the pitching was depleted. This season, uh, but a lot of guys got work, and you know now I don't know where the bats are going to be. And yeah, <laughs> you're going to start to hear of other guys that are not going to be returning, and a lot um, of questions in baseball. Yeah, men's golf: six new additions, four freshmen, two transfers. Newcomers: Guillermo Esteville comes from Argentina, Artem Yalavenko from Russia, Juan Delgado from the Dominican Republic, and Jordan Sarhati from 
Lando Lakes. <laughs> that one just didn't fit in, right? Yeah. All the other countries. And yeah. then, oh, yeah, Lando Lakes. <laughs> As for transfers, Johnny Trevally comes from Kent State and Teddy Tetak from South Carolina. So we traded. Yeah. We got uh, we got a guy from South Carolina We're and we lost a guy a to South Carolina. Player, yeah. Yeah, that's how that works. All right. For the second time in program history, a UCF women's golf team member earned All-American honors. Last week, Elizabeth Moon was named All-American honorable mention by Golf Week. Very talented. Very talented yeah. golfer. Yeah. Um, also, she took uh, runner-up honors at the FSGA Amateur, which was a big deal. Um, very talented. Yeah. So very good to have her on the golf team. Um, very cool. Mm-hmm. All right. Well. All right. See, that UConn thing really uh, gave us a what did, what did we what did Jeff Allen call a little juice? All right. That's all the juice you get from us this week. This has been Nightline One Ninety Two. I'm Andrew Fagley. I'm Trace Trulco. Go Knights. Charge on.